So, uh, welcome to another episode of the Agile Podcast. Mm. And welcome back, Mr. Baker. So, thank you for inviting us into your home. Oh, yes, this is my home. We don't know where we can get him on these days. We say that because we are in the Baker's the Baker's Arms. Yes, the Baker's usually arms. in the Baker's Arms. Can't move the mountain to Mohammed. Yes. And Mohammed to the mountain. Well, I'll well, tell you what, Mohammed and the mountain, neither of them were in fucking Swindon. <laughs> Well, they probably will be. Probably somewhere. Yeah. No, so, no, um, no. It okay. has been a while, right? We're checking yeah. uh, on the way here, but I think it's we haven't heard from you on this since Christmas time. Yeah, so this is my first uh, 2019 podcast. Hopefully it won't be the last. So Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy, New Year. <laughs> <laughs> happy Easter. Oh, yeah, happy yeah. Easter. We've done that, yeah. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, not yet, no. No, not yet, no. He's had his. Yeah, I've had mine. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to me. Happy birthday, happy birthday to me. Cheers. Don't look a day under 48. Mm. You've done very well. I haven't trimmed this one. I'm growing a bit of beard at the moment. Mm. I can't remember the last time I saw you clean shaven. No. Yeah, when I see some of your publicity photos online, yeah. clean shaven, I think, who is this man? <laughs> well, trying, I think I've changed most of them now to be beard, no. beard focused. No. Oh. And now I'm going to save that to later. Okay. A little surprise for you on that front. Oh dear. That sounds what? better than it is. Oh, dear. you've got a beard. It's not much of a surprise. No, I've it's... got a tiny wispy little bit of a beard. Tiny wispy little one. Yeah. Uh, no, oh. about uh, daddy head... beard, mummy beard, <laughs> <laughs> baby beard. <laughs> <laughs> v- visual reference there for the people listening on the podcast. Okay, um, okay. You want to do that later? So, yes. So, um, what was I going to say? Start the music. Oh, party starts. How loud is it? Walking on sunshine. No, it sounds like it. Someone's put the the uh, jukebox that sh- on. That shouldn't be too. That no, should be okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah. What were you going to say, Paul? Um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Just um, yeah, we said where we are. What we're drinking? We have some drinks. Baker's Arms in Swindon. Oh. What? Tell me something interesting about the Baker's Arms in Swindon. It's in Beechcroft Road in Swindon. <laughs> Um, we literally picked this because it was the baker's arms. It's got two, it's not two dance boards. It's got quite a foodie. It's an Arkles pub, isn't it? Yeah. Arkles Brewery. We should swind- oh, yeah. swindon based brewery, isn't it? it? Okay. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, we, yeah, we didn't really know anything interesting about it. We just thought, seeing as we're having you on, and there was yeah. a baker's arms in Swindon, we should... We should we, and we've also got our arms in Swindon. Strictly speaking, there isn't a baker's arms in Swindon, is there? <laughs> There's two baker's arms in Swindon. <laughs> so as what we happened, found out. What way. happened earlier on, Jeff? <laughs> I, I put in because I'm driving today, so I'm only allowed half a drink. <laughs> um, and I put into my car, take me to the Baker's Arms, and it took me to the Baker's Arms, but not the right Baker's Arms. Uh, the closed Baker's Arms, or the open Baker's, Baker's Arms. arms. Yeah. You've done the God of Arms before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. It's it's also yeah. in Swindon. Yeah. So is that like a Watts Arms? We could it should be. It should be. I'll try and find one. Mm-hmm. Perhaps so our listeners can to point, point to us to a a what's related pub yeah. somewhere in the UK we'll mm-hmm. find it yeah. maybe so what are we drinking? I'm drinking Hurricane a pint of Hurricane it's very cold really cold fill the glass really cold my, for, my, for a pint of ale that's really cold yeah my, my drink's very cold as well but then for my cider it should be cold and when something is cold the taste isn't as strong right if, oh. you, if you put something in the fridge it doesn't taste as well yeah um, is that why people do have a white wine it tastes horrible, maybe. maybe. It tastes less horrible. <laughs> maybe. Sorry, white wine drinkers. Maybe. This is kind of a nutty, nutty oh. ale. But that's all I'm getting, really. Lots so, of nuts. Yeah, nutty. It's quite nice. It'll be interesting whether it tastes different when it's warmer. Okay, very good. And you guys are drinking something really exotic. Something very uh, quite unusual to find in, in pubs these days, I think. It's a pint of Strongbow. Um, <laughs> Classic Strongbow. Classic Strongbow. Yeah. Let me just have a quick taste test. Right. I'm strong words in my favourite cider. Is it? Saying, no, it's not. Oh. It's quite. It's more the dry it's cider. It's dry. It's dry. That's why yeah. I don't like it. It's yeah. not sweet. Yeah. I'm not too. I'm not quite fond of it's dry cider. It's very cold. It's cold and it's appley, mm. which is the main thing. Yeah. Your has got an aftertaste to it, doesn't it? But I'm fine with that. Uh, I, Jeff offered me earlier on the strongbow with dark fruit, I believe it was. And I don't want to drink that because I'm not twelve. Okay. So. Have we seen our last pub? Yeah. Cool. Yes. Um, <laughs> What was I going to say? Do we need, are we got, and saying cheers to anyone today? So we've got Jamie Collins. Jamie. And Andy. Jamie and Andy. Let's just go first names in case we do Jamie and Andy, yeah. So, Jamie and Andy, cheers. Cheers. Thank you for uh, new subscribing. So what percentage do I get of that? <laughs> <laughs> the 
dregs at the bottom of the glass. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, dear. This should be like a nighty bonus. I'm trying to give just a little bit more just when Nigel's on. I'll buy you a drink and have a Christmas. Christmas. Time. There's no need to be afraid. Cool. So, Nigel, what's, yes. what's, what's new? What's new? Well, I've been to Austin. The, the oh, course, global yes. scrum gathering in Austin. No, we mentioned that last time. We, 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 we toasted you last time. Yeah, yeah I just think last time we recorded you. I have to admit, you occasionally, occasionally I do listen to your podcast when I'm not on it. I always listen to everyone <laughs> I'm on. And I do, I do like the slightly sarcastic put downs that happen. Um, uh, Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, so I went to the Global Scrum Gathering in Austin. Good. Enjoy it. Enjoy good, it good. I've got a little report for you if you're interested. Lovely. Good for it. I, so, by the way, people on the camera will see this. I've actually written this down because last time I did a report on the gathering, I forgot everything. So when Jeff asked me questions, <laughs> I kind of went, uh, yeah, like things happened agilely. So I made a few notes for myself. Guys, did notice my few notes? Yeah, right. It's only, I've only got a 35-minute profit, okay. so, so I'll just buckle in. Basically, buckle in. Buckle in. <laughs> Here we go. So first things first, on the first day of gatherings, we have the trainer coaches retreat. Correct. Day. This is where the high-level certification people in the Scrum Alliance come together. It's so actually the day before the gathering. Yeah, it's on the Sunday. And the one we had in Austin for the CSTs, enterprise coaches, team coaches, was actually, not joking, the best retreat I've ever been to. Why? Um, I'll tell you why, um, because it was because of Howard and Melissa. Okay. So Howard Sublett, I believe, uh, how you pronounce it, is the chief product owner of the Scrum Alliance. I think uh, you got that one right. I think I did. That's right. not going to go on from here on in. <laughs> He's the chief product owner of the Scrum Alliance, which is the new replacement for the sort of the CEO role. Oh, and, so it is um, replacing the CEO. Yeah, the CEO, okay. MD's gone. Okay. Now there's a product owner and scrum master that okay. goes in scrum. Okay. Um, Melissa uh, Boggs, I believe, is the chief scrum master. Mm-hmm. And they did a, a, a sort of a, a duet, so to speak, a, okay. a double act presentation on where they see the scrum lines going, where they see the community going, and it was just brilliant. It was led by the heart. It was with the right agile values and principles, which is really good because in the past we've had leadership that has not been aligned with the values and principles of the world of transforming the world of work. Um, but even better, actually getting stuff done. Okay, <laughs> so it's yeah. not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. Okay. And actually practically getting stuff done, not just telling people what they want to hear. And that really aligned the room, that sense of purpose. So did they just top and tail the day, or did they run sessions throughout the uh, day? There's, there's a load of sessions during the day on a variety of Scrum Alliance things, not necessarily by them, but by Scrum Alliance staff, right. on a variety of their particular topics, but they top the day. Okay. The little, just little so 10, 15 minutes. Um, we're transforming the world of work, we're an alliance, we're a non-profit, we're in this for the people, not in this for the cash. Okay. Which is, which, um, That's something I've heard they, Howard say time yeah, and time yeah. again, various presentations, yeah, and it, it's about impact, not about, not revenue. Yeah, yeah, and that's really, really key, and that aligned a lot of people, yeah. um, but also understanding how practically to do that. Yeah. It's all well and good walk, uh, talking the talk, but actually walking the walk, the practicality of how do we actually do this, how do we help us as a community drive that forward and help genuine change happen so yeah, on the warp surface. Things like some of the certification programs that are coming up, uh, improving that. Um, they're building, they're making the Scrum Alliance a real agile organisation, possibly the only real agile organisation on earth. So that's self-organising teams, yeah. right, empowered, doing the work. So clearing out a lot of the historical hierarchy in the Alliance or in any organisation and actually getting it to a a place where we're having real empowered self-organizing teams lead on this, uh, leading the way with people like Howard and Melissa supporting them through that. What kind of teams are they? It's teams like events, but teams also like certification, teams like, um, uh, what was the other one? Event certification, uh, things like uh, audience outreach, uh, membership, teams like that, but being grouped around like needs, not necessarily grouped around skill sets. Oh, mm-hmm. that's good. So, and the vast, vast majority of the Alliance staff are completely aligned with that. Good. So the Scrum Alliance has flattened its hierarchy hugely, which is brilliant. It's got a real flat structure now, mm-hmm. um, really pushing the way forward. But what's interesting is they want, they've been looking for case studies to help them move forward. Yeah. It looks like they're going to have to be the case study. Mm-hmm. No one else is doing it like this. Mm-hmm. No one else is being this agile with their organisations. So it's really good to see an organisation doing what it talks about, mm-hmm. rather than yeah. you know, uh, uh, talking but not walking. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really interesting for me. Um, the other interesting thing for me was, uh, I did a couple of, we had an open space. This on is the still on a Sunday. Still on Sunday retreat. Yeah. We had an open space, so there's a lot of things on a variety of subjects like this. Um, a couple that I was interested in, I put one in, on Cal, Certified Agile Leadership. Right. I t- I, let me give you the name of it, I called it um, 
Let's talk about yeah. Let's talk about Cal, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things, all the bad things that may be. Yes. So two people laughed at that, but they were the right two people, which is the correct thing. Um, no, isn't it? Um, not sort of. Let's talk about sex. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Who? Oh, I was the other one I was thinking about then. Good network. Telling me bad. I was thinking about. Mm. That's that's. Uh, I want to sex you. you up. Oh, I should have done that joke. Oh anyway, my! Okay, so a couple people got the joke. <laughs> so I wanted to talk. I, I wanted done. to talk about Cal, um, certified agile leadership, um, not about the mechanics of it. Or I can get that from other learning objectives, but actually hear people's story behind it. Okay. Why are they doing it? What's the narrative behind the cow? Because um, I've been uh, struggling to understand that a little bit. What's, what's the aim of this? Why are they in this? Why are we doing this? Um, so I wanted to get other people's stories. I made a few notes for myself on that. Um, what was interesting for me was we did get into the weeds quite quickly of mechanics. So a lot of people, when I said, I want to tell me your story behind your cow, not, I don't need details, tell me your story. A lot of people went straight to the mechanics. Mm -hmm. Or oh, Kinevin, you know, what else they talk about? Leadership, uh, uh, Bill Joyner's work, you know, spiral dynamics, which is all like the what, I want to know the why. You know, and that got quite interesting then, talking about um, why people are offering this. So uh, there was a few trainers there who come from a leadership background, so they wanted to help other leaders on that journey, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, some trainers there were uh, on a very much middle management journey. You know, trying to help people, uh, help middle managers become more practical with agile. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some people are trying to look on the journey. Okay, where are we actually going so yeah. far? How do I take someone who's a middle manager and raise them to the next level to be a future potential leader? Right. Because that was quite interesting about that, the two different tones, because that's where I was struggling a little bit with it. Is it like aim at the, the middle world of an organization or the high end, the C level? Yeah. And uh, one company were talking about how they do two versions of that course. One version for C-level management, you know, for leaders, and one version for the middle managers to aspire to. But if you're so, flattening the hierarchy, why should there be a difference? I know, well, I think the idea is you're trying to raise um, future leaders, is the idea. Is Cal for future leaders or current leaders? Was Some of the graduate there. programs. Or yeah, that. but not for graduates, but for, you know, like, people graduating onto real leadership. Because you might, hopefully, with a flattened hierarchy, there'll be less middle management positions. So did you decide your own narrative? Yeah, yeah, so I, I, well, I feel when I was talking about the own, because I'm looking to build my own certified agile leadership. I've done a lot of work on that, but I, I had a lot of the bits, but without the overall narrative, and I think I found the narrative for me. So for me, the narrative is about uh, agile leadership, not just about leadership. So I'm not really interested in doing a leadership course. <laughs> There's millions out there, they're quite good. But I'm interested about how do we bring agile to leadership is what interests me, you know, that, that tone of it. And so that can be aspiring leaders or current leaders, but it's bringing agile to the experience. So that's what I liked about that. So I got a lot of value out of that, actually, funny enough. So how um, many people, were, just broadly, would you say were in that retreat? How many attendees? 200. Oh, right. Yeah, 200 people, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a fair number. Mm -hmm. um, there was about 25 in that cow one. Well, right. Maybe 20, well, 20 okay. in, in the cow one. Um, so I found that quite interesting. Because uh, the thing was, my big worry was when I was putting it together, the package, mm -hmm. was it was just going to be certified Scrum Master for leaders. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, basically high level, hey, here's Scrum, I didn't want to do that, there's no point to doing that. But finding that extra journey and that agile aspect, I think, made it quite useful for me. Anyway, um, there was some other stuff in there about um, just uh, as an alliance. How do trainers work together as an alliance? How do coaches and trainers interact? Because it's quite interesting in America, it's quite different than over here. So in America, a lot of the certified trainers like ourselves tend to be solely training right. and solely doing public training. Okay. So running public courses in cities around America. Yeah. And of course, this causes some strife because they overbook each other. People turn up at the same town on the same day. It causes some tension. Yeah. Uh, I think in Europe, we don't seem to have a lot less of that. I don't know about you, but I do a lot less public training than private training yeah. and mostly in-house. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of conversation about how they not like, you know, um, uh, cause trouble for each other but more interesting for me was just how do we better communicate to each other as well um, yeah. so that was quite interesting in terms of trainers how do we engage we're, we're competitors mm -hmm. completely true but we also need to be agile and be would collaborate as well yeah. we can't just treat each other as adversaries what was so, it? Uh, was mainly things just about how to communicate better online to each other so you know we have a trainer message board where sometimes the conversations can get um, colourful colourful um, uh, some people have, have checked out of that message board because of its colourful nature. And so people were talking about how to best, better communicate online to each other in a way that is constructive. Yeah, still challenging, but constructive. Yeah. I thought it was quite interesting as well. Did they so, decide anything? There were some, there were some uh, experiments they wanted to 
So I don't want to get too much into them here, but things like forum models, yeah. where you can have like group moderation or moderators. Yeah. And, like we always talk about self-organizing teams needing facilitators, yeah. that type of thing. It's getting quite big. That community yeah. is getting quite yeah. big. Yeah, so that, that, that three fifty, yeah, yeah. three hundred and fifty people on the mailing list is quite large, and so having some sort of facilitator or moderation in there can be quite interesting. So what I liked about that was it was the group self-organizing answers to its own complex problems. Okay. Which the joke is, you would expect us as agile people to do oh, that, yeah. but the amount of agile coaches I meet who don't, <laughs> no, it's like herding cats, herding all the agile coaches. So actually embracing that looks quite interesting as well. Yeah, fair enough. Um, uh, what else is going on there? Oh yeah, so uh, there's interesting. There's also interesting at the conference. They had a CSP room, certified scrum professional room. Yeah. The idea being a little space for some of the more mid-level certifications, so they can have some one-to-one chats privately if they want to, yeah. or mix privately a little bit of a sort of like club lounge in a hotel. Uh, I wasn't too sure of the idea. I'm so was it a bit exclusive? Did it, did yeah, it that, was, some that was my work. Uh, my work is going to be a little bit exclusive, having this little yeah. club lounge. But turns out, because the Scrum Alliance is not that disciplined, everyone came to the room anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it was a lovely little... There was no bouncer on the door. There was no bouncer on the door. So everyone just came in, had a chat. And the people who wanted to come and have a chat did. And it was quite nice to have a little, a little off to the we, space. We had, I think, I think it was labelled as a CSP lounge, but we had a lounge area in... Um, in London, the, the, the venue didn't lend itself very well to it, but with the idea of a breakout space just for people yeah. to sit more quietly and drink yeah. coffee and stuff. Yeah, and so the idea was that it was good for one-to-one chats in there, so a few of us went in there, had some chats, yeah. some good conversations, almost like an informal coaches clinic, because yeah. you know at these gatherings they always have the official coaches clinic where people go get help, it was kind of like a, an adjunct to that, like yeah. A, yeah, like a, so we can all sit down and have a chat and a conversation, so a few of us water did that type Yeah, water cooler moments, it was quite nice for that actual room for that. Um, so, conference proper started Monday morning. Yeah, Dan Pink. That's a big, uh, Daniel, big. Um, Pink. Yeah, that is a big um, draw, isn't it? Surely, in terms of numbers. Yeah. Huge draw, huge money, um, but I think huge value. Was he worth it? Yeah, I think so. I think so actually. Um, he brought in more people than he cost. I know that. So that's already paid for himself, like like a, a, a top line. I always think about wrestling. So my big thing, I like professional wrestling. In professional wrestling, you have a card of wrestlers, okay? You pick to get people in to pay, to put their bum on the seat every 18 inches. Now some wrestlers are what they call headliners. They bring loads of people in, right? They may not be the greatest wrestler on earth, but they bring loads of people a good show, a box office, yeah. Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, woo, you know. That's what Pink was. He did a good stuff. His con- his content was good, really good. He was really engaging, really interesting. Good speaker. Yeah, good speaker. There were some sessions in the actual um, on the card of the gathering that were probably better, right? In terms, in terms of, of content. content. Yeah. These are like the wrestlers who wrestle for thirty minutes and know their stuff, but they're not headliners. You right. Know? So Pink gets you in the door. But these guys on the card, mm. you know, give the full content. But he really added value. He wasn't just a headliner. Do we think, so just for the benefit of the listeners, do we, do we need to remind or establish who Dan Pink is? Or not? have we made an assumption that Dan Pink wrote the book Drive, mm-hmm. which is the famous um, uh, Tommy Murphy purpose book, uh, New York bestseller. He's, an, he's a, basically a, a great author who takes a lot of sociology, anthropology, economics, literature, and turns it into an easily digestible form for the mainstream. Speech strikes it for Al Gore. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. There we go. That, thank you. Yeah. So he basically, his stuff was on about um, about timings. So beginnings, middles and ends. Right. About how, this here the greatest bit of advice ever, which is if ever you have a doctor's appointment or a hospital appointment, go in the morning. Never go in the afternoon, ever. Because there's a range of research showing doctors make like four times the mistakes in the afternoon or four times the errors in your dentistry in the afternoon to the morning. So if you, he said, if you take one thing from his presentation, do your doctor's appointment, your dentist, and everything in the morning. Is that anything to do with like decision fatigue? Mm-hmm. Is that, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's for decision fatigue. It's timing. It's, yes, there's a variety of things. Yeah. And so he did a lot. I don't want to get too much into his detail. He did a book on it. I think called When or something. Let me look it up. Yeah. Is it a new yeah. book? Yeah, fairly new. Was he was but, he pushing um, that? Part? It was a little bit, not too hard, but um. But the idea was uh, the beginnings, middles, and ends were quite interesting. You know, I understand that people waver at the midpoint in yeah. decisions and, and projects and work. Uh, how people need endings that elevate, endings that excite, endings that close, not endings that bring them down. Um, so this is all really, really interesting stuff. 
Um, he also talked about like midpoints in, so in all projects. Basically, people waste half the time prevaricating, get to pretty much the halfway mark. It could be a two hour project, a two year project, get to halfway. The science is again and again. That's when they go, we need to do something about this and get going. And so, what's really interesting was how he lined up. He was actually quite enthusiastic about Scrum to a certain extent, saying right. you guys don't have this problem because of how you work, but many other people do. They do have splints of where he called them. Um, Episodes is what he called them. Right. So it's a term I use a lot, like episodes of work. Mm. Is if you have a shorter episode, you get to that wobbly uh, midpoint earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you think of a two year project, you get to the wobbly midpoint in one year, two week sprint is one week in. So that was quite interesting as well. Was he, did he do his homework on? Scrum or not? He you, did a little bit. He kind, of, he kind of knew what it was. Did he? Because he mentioned things like sprints and stuff. Okay. And he got one week, one and two. But so he, he knew, he knows about it. I don't know a lot, but he knows about it. He okay. can reference it a bit. That's good. Because a lot of points he was making, he said, look, you may not suffer from this actually, mm. because X. Like we have closure at the end of every time box. Mm. So you talk about you want endings that elevate, endings that give experiences where it feels like you're getting somewhere, yeah. which we do all the time. So that was quite what are the well. consequences of the wobbly middle part? Um, well, there's three. There's three consequences. So if you, he said, if you're miles behind and you get to the wobbly middle point, you give up. Uh, if you're um, just in front, it doesn't help. If you're just behind and you hit the wobbly middle point, you're likely to finish better than earlier than the people who are slightly in front of me. Okay. So you're talking about you want to be, you want to be, yeah, like you want to be a little bit behind yeah. the middle point. Ooh, we've got to try it. So that's so that's kind of natural curve yeah, to your yeah. Work. Yeah. Okay. So rather than um, a miles ahead or miles by miles by, you give up. But he talks something about a chocolate as well. So like the last chocolate is pleasure elevates. Mm. So he did a, a bit of an interesting experimentation. I can't describe it now about eating chocolates and telling people how many chocolates they're having or not having. Mm. If you know you're gonna have five chocolates and you have the fifth one, there's like an, an elevation to the fifth one. Like, oh, this is my, my chocolate. It's not my if kids. You get, but if you don't know, that. if you don't know how many chocolates you're gonna have, and you just stop it arbitrarily, you don't get the final pleasure on the final chocolate. So it's, it's my, uh, I'm sure it was my daughter who was eating fish fingers and chips. Mm -hmm. Oh no, sausages or something like that. There's something on her plate and she had she had a number of them, three, three on them on the plate. And I said, why are you eating that one? So I'm saving that to last. I said, why? That's the best one. Yeah. So yeah. even though they looked completely identical, there was something, the last roller, wasn't it? Yeah. The kind of marketing yeah. campaign. Dessert at the end of a meal. Who do you, yeah, who do you love enough to give them the last roller? But that, UK that, reference that endings that elevate thing is actually going to make me change my course. Because certified scrum master, when I run it, I prioritise it. Highest priority first. Oh really? Low so you finish on something days. low value. Yeah, yeah. Because as soon as I get run late, we yeah, can scope. Yeah. But it doesn't elevate. Uh, but who really wants to finish on a burn down chart? No. So I was doing that to risk reduce the course. Yeah, yeah. But I now think in terms of an episode of a course experience, nice. maybe we want to end on something that elevates. Maybe some exercise or something that brings people up at the end. Yes. While I'm bringing them down at the end. So it's making me rethink that a little bit as well. Yeah. So that was quite useful there. I quite like that. Um, uh, then what do I do? Okay, so I did. So I made my notes for myself here. Um, yeah, do you, get, well, do you guys ever do 59 minutes scrum? Oh, yeah, so. I do it in a product end, of course. Yeah. Do you do it at the end, at the start? Yeah. Of the end? So I was thinking of doing something like that at the end, like a simulation at the end. So I try and finish my CSM courses on, a, on the, ex, the, second, the final part of the exercise where they build their product. I suppose you do something similar in your leg and thing, but... Yeah. So the, the thing that we finish the course is, is basically the demonstration and because they've had a previous sprint which has never gone very well typically yeah. they finish on a better sprint so you're finishing with a positive experience of yeah. completing yeah something which is sufficient quality that is yeah. is worth it. so trying to and the, yeah. you know a bit of a positive people yeah. leave yeah the primary recency effect isn't it people remember the first thing and the last yeah. thing that they get Delivered in those Cause, cause I was thinking about that in terms of coaching as well. A lot of coaches take off, don't they? They go and they've got their six month gig or whatever, work, 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 work. Then at the end, it tapers away and dies, and the contract's done. I think it should be nice as a coach to sort of have an ending that elevates. So yeah. you know your ending's coming soon, you can try and build to a crescendo at the end of the experience. All right, so that was the main keynote. Very good, I thought. Uh, very happy with it. Um, I then went into Brent, Brent, Brent Barton's okay, okay. session. Um, he did it on um, entropy basically and wrote down the title there somewhere. Um, something on the lines of um, uh, entropy in, in, in agile transformation. So the idea that agile transformation. Entropy is the rate, is it the rate of change? You've got, I... the, you've got the degree in it, haven't you? So... I should know that. It's sort of it's a decay, isn't it? It's like entropy is like the, the, the decaying down to a steady state, isn't yeah. it? Something like that. Something like that. Um, but he says, um, so I went to that because basically Brent was my mentor to my CST He was, yeah, he was yeah. on your panel, wasn't he? He was my panel, he was the one. So after you handed me off to him, he sort of looked after me all the way through, which I remember correctly was two emails. <laughs> <laughs> 
and one was after Paul popped to him saying, are you going to help my employer? <laughs> so, but, um, sorry for that, that's not true, Brent. But he did a really interesting one about um, how your agile implementation will not survive this next reorganization. Right, okay. So people give these agile transformations or whatever, and he says most people are on their fourth or fifth or third agile transformation. Mm. They've taken two or three shots at it, and every time they get going, it goes quite nicely. There's a reorganization, Jason. collapses like a house of cards. Mm. So he was talking about trying to do something there. And I thought it was interesting for me, what I took from that session was it's about changing organizations not changed organizations. Well, there is no agile end states. We're trying to build organizations that change and organizations that can change again and again. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a lot of people's agile transformations, which is probably the wrong word anyway, transformations are trying to think of it like an end state, like a robot changing, when in fact it needs to be a constantly manable uh, environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I took from the session. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he said, he said this, he said, his advice was um, own it, prioritize and fund it, and make it last. Which I guess is obvious advice really, but it's really important, isn't it? To get the organisation to own it, so it's not an outside org. Prioritise it and give it money, but you're not feeding it, then it's not going to yeah. grow, is it? And then make it last, try and build it into the organisational structure. Oh, he said another interesting one, which I quite like, is a quote, but it wasn't really part of his presentation, but it was just a sidebar, which is just, is a dirty word. Mm -hmm. you know, couldn't you just, you know? So, oh, it's, just a small, it's just a small chain. I was trying to force someone, I was like, it's just a small chain. So can we just, you know, like trying to minimise someone's effort or minimise someone's contribution? Yeah. So I took that one, a little one as well. Anyway, um, other session I did was uh, Judy Neha. Neha, I can't pronounce your last name, Judy. Judy Neha. Neha, that's the one. Uh, CST, she did a, a session on abuser stories. Okay. Which I thought was quite fun. Um, basically, Shit, sort of, user stories. Yeah, user abuser stories, though. But, so, so negative persona. Yeah, negative persona. So oh, okay. as, as a thief, I want to crash your system. Right. As a hacker, yeah. I want to steal your data, say that. Which I thought was quite fun. I do something similar. I've never called it abuser stories, though, so I quite like the title. Mm -hmm. um, but she did refutation. Uh, yeah. Refutation, is that the word? Refute. When you refute something. How do you pronounce that? Refute. Refutory? Refut anyway, whatever that word is, <laughs> listeners. Um, refutory criteria. So the idea, you have the front of the story saying, as a, yeah. as a hacker, I want to, as a data mine, I want to get all your sales, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Then the acceptance criteria. Uh, yeah, basically, that, how do I stop this happening? So okay. the acceptance criteria, I need to do this, this, Reverse, this, and this yeah. to make sure the front of the card cannot happen. Yeah. And of course, she said, of course, you can't say cannot, impossible is impossible, but make it as hard as possible to happen. Yeah. So that was quite a nice way of admitting the acceptance criteria. Nice. So I quite like that. So I've done that negative persona before, but I've Judy's not done yeah. refu like refutation, whatever the word is. Uh, quite like that one. I know Judy. Uh, but she's, wait. On, she's on attack. So, okay. so there we got to, right, halfway through. Monday Mingle. Always good, Monday Mingle. Okay. Um, always good. So for um, those of you who've never been to a gathering before, Monday Mingle is just a big piss up. <laughs> That's unfair, some people don't drink. But it is a big party it's on Monday night. Um, social gathering. Social gathering of everyone. It's from the by everyone free drinks. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, this year it was fun. They had, it was in a, now for the Americans who listen to this, which I'm sure are many, no, many, no, many, many, many dozens of Americans. <laughs> It was somewhere called Austin City Limits, which I've been told some American uh, pop, uh, TV show used to appear from okay. in the old days, like Top of the Pops, okay. basically. Some sort of country and western show used to be filmed there. Yeah. So there was a few Americans okay. going, ooh, wow, this is where blah, 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 blah happens. Yeah, with something like that, and I had no idea of that. So it was just a big auditorium, like, really. Um, they had some country band playing, which is quite yeah. good as well. So that was quite fun. Music. Yeah, some barbecue food, which was quite nice as well. And in the end, some was the karaoke, which wasn't so nice. Which song did you ruin for everyone? I lunch? ruined Enjoy the Silence by the Fetch <laughs> So and people were wishing they had some silence. <laughs> yeah, they were very much. And um, Dave Fryer, fellow CST, Thank you, Dave Fryer, fellow CST, wanted to sing Wonderwall Oasis, but he wanted some company. Oh, I see, I don't think so Wonderwall's got, a good I don't like song. either, but I'll still help him out. I'll go and, t I'll go and pair with him. Um, and then uh, he ran away halfway through the evening. <laughs> so I ended up having to sing Wonderwall on my own, which was not great. It's, it's just not great. great no, it's awesome. Give us a couple of bars just for the just No, for the no, no. no. Um, so what I will we'll say let, is, we'll what, no, what, I would, what I would say is what I make up for in talent, I, uh, what I lack in talent, I made up for in gusto, and I slightly broke my voice doing so. So that's when we oh okay when, yeah, okay so um, that that was that really that. that was that really how does it go don't even try I don't want to see it I'll do, do the guitar. guitar yeah ding 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 ding
deep. <laughs> we're getting there. You can edit this. <laughs> I think we need to. That's fine. 31 minutes in. That's fine. That's fine. Day two was open space all day. Okay. And it went very well this year, I felt. A lot of people didn't know how open space works, like always. So we had. So like, they, did, they did the whole day dedicated to open space? They had like a thin stream of conference sessions running in the background, but they were very minor ones. Uh, Oof. Mostly. Oof. mostly, Oof. mostly Oof. No, not like big speakers. Though, but, uh, <laughs> not like you, no. No, no I, I spoke in the open space. <laughs> so uh, I. On open space, there was loads, but well, about a third of the people took part. But still, five hundred odd people. Yeah, yeah. So it still went pretty well. That's a lot. That's a long. It was a long hog to get all the sessions. To get on, to get the marketplace. Yeah, that took a while. It took a long time. Um, I did a couple, and and open spaces. So I had a couple of people come up to me and ask if, when I was talking, and I kept saying I'm not talking. I'm having this one off. I um, so I didn't yeah. put it in for Austin. I just wanted to go as a yeah. attendee. But then my ego got the better of me, and so I thought I'll put something in the open space to uh, we'll have a group discussion. Was that your cow thing, or was that? The no, they didn't care. It was about agilifying <laughs> agile coaches. Okay. So I did all those videos yeah. and that because oh, I thought I'd just. Up and down volume. <laughs> yeah. okay. it, it's called jump scares. Uh, I'll keep you interested. Hello. No. <laughs> but uh, what I would say is, so I thought I'd just do something on that, but it was very off the cuff. So I didn't know any of the content. I can remember it. I just did it off the cuff. But it was quite good work. Well. It's like all these things. I, I planned it to be a workshop. We'll do a workshop together. Mm. What do you think happened? Nigel time. I had to go all the time. time. Yeah, Nigel time. Nigel presentation time. <laughs> I felt slightly bad, um, but not too bad. You sit there, let, let me talk. Let me talk a bit, like I'm doing now. <laughs> um, so, uh, Just was, wind him up and let him go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you want some content. It's free content. So we had a chat about that. I thought it was quite interesting. Um, there's a lot of actual genuine coaches in there, or scrum masters, aspiring to be coaches just trying to watch out for some common flaws. Some people had very similar patterns they mentioned. So it was quite interesting, people brought up some ideas. I said, oh, I don't know that, let's put it on the board. And then as I kept talking, they were, oh, that's actually that idea. So okay. it lined back up with a different name later on, which I thought was quite interesting. Can you give me an example of my little mind? Um, so I talk about like different forms of human networks. Right. So things like pairing, mm-hmm. uh, clubs, you know, so like you're doing tonight, the um, meetup group. group. Meetup groups. Um, things like that, um, Scrum Master Community. Mm-hmm. So there was one they called Intervention, and I was like, I, I don't know that one, is put up on the board. Then I have one later, which is like Coach or Mentor, basically like, like, a, like, a, like a psychiatrist coach. Mm-hmm. They said, oh, it's that. Okay. So it's that shape. So they had found the same pattern, just gave it a different language. Yeah. So it was quite cool. So like the human networks and stuff. So I quite enjoyed doing that. Um, I may even turn that into a conference presentation at some point, maybe. So uh, it seemed to work quite well. So that was quite good. I made a good chat. Um, there were some other ones going. I went to a few other ones. I don't know if I made any notes on them. But I went to a few other ones about um, uh, other things that were going on in the conference, other open spaces. But the people who did the open space seemed to get a lot of value from it. Um, I think they didn't, a lot of people didn't quite know what it was, mm. and the wind up was a bit slow. Right. So it did have some wastage on the conference. So I see it's about a third to two thirds wandered yeah. off. But I think it was it's almost like. There was no overriding vision or theme then for the open space. I believe there was. Okay, but you can't remember what the cover was. But it was yeah, when you've got that many people, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to. But people don't listen to it anyway. It's like there was about a third of the sessions were about, um, hey, I didn't get a conference presentation yeah. into Austin. So here's, it. here's my conference presentation. But they were quite good. Some of those. About a third was, hey, I've got some ideas on X. Let's talk about X. And about a third was help me, help me, help me with why. <laughs> <laughs> I need some help with why, and so well, that was quite interesting as always. But the people who did them got a little value out of all of them. Um, did, you, just, did you go to the last keynote? No, I couldn't make that. The hashtag right. guy I couldn't yeah. make. Uh, okay. Chris, I got his name in Christmas scene or something. I uh, did the uh, hashtag. I just couldn't make that to get a flight home. There's okay. one flight a day to the UK from Moscow. Okay. But I did see the scrum lines asked some of us to mentor some people who are doing their first sessions. Right. You know, through the conference, they're doing their first session over at the conference. Yeah. They wanted someone who's spoken before to be available, they need some help. Mm. I helped, I think it was Emmy, her name was, I helped her as much as Brent helped me. <laughs> <laughs> Two emails. <laughs> but she was great, I went to see her session, it was fine. It was good, good session, <laughs> yeah. So, nice new, new session, uh, Scrum in her life. Using Scrum to emigrate, using Scrum to get married. Wow, okay. It's quite interesting as well. So, and, and uh, iterating, I thought was the best one about immigration, mm. emigrating. So, tried to emigrate, failed, tried to emigrate, failed, and did it a third time. I had to iterate the experience. It was quite interesting. Half an hour session, but fun. A nice way to, a nice um, sorbet to cleanse the palate at the end okay. of the conference, you know? So, in terms of trying to summarise it, if you were to score it out of 10, the gathering itself, how many? It'll be a British you... 8. A British eight, which is probably a US nine, I'd say. Okay. Uh, the some issues I had was room allocations. Some rooms filled really quickly. 
There were room full size always happens, open. Isn't it? it didn't used to, but um, they got the room size as well on some people. Oh, okay. So on, some, on some of the speakers. Yeah, some people's rooms just went pink instant full. I might get there quite early and then we're just done for that because of um, uh, the fire code. Uh, Oh uh, yeah, there was loads of uh, the, the one last thing. Oh, well then, one last thing uh, before you can take over. We have nothing else to do. <laughs> we just drink, and the night well, have barely finished the quarter. Damn it! Of I'm making sure I didn't forget anything about this. Um, the final thing was lots of US government stuff, yeah. which meant nothing to me. Uh, okay. <laughs> lots of like, hey, this is how you can do agile with a contract in the US government. Like, wow, it has no relevance to me at all. Turns out all the UK governments are so much easier than the US. There's some real that. weird and wonderful rules over there and weird and wonderful behaviours. So there's going to be a, a huge interest in that and a huge amount of content on that, neither of which I cared anything about. Right. So that, that was the only thing I was like. But could you still have a rich conference while avoiding that? Yeah, definitely. You can dance, so around it. Yeah, dance around that, basically. Um, yeah, and the only one was just the open space, as always, doesn't get full. Full attendance, it doesn't get full interest, it only gets about a third of the people. And what do the rest of the people do? Go to the one, museum? Yeah, wander off, have some self care time, chat in the corridors, do a few sessions, and go do the emails. Yeah. If you miss out on a whole day, which is open space, and you paid a lot of money, yeah, to that's, go that's, yeah. yeah, that was why largely why we I know we took a lot of stick for dropping it in London last year, but we felt that it was it's the third. We wanted to offer some kind of different price tickets yeah. so people could do. Choose opt in to the open space or not, but um, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a huge. It's, it's, yeah, it's difficult because the, the, the people the people who did it got a load out of it. Yeah, they did the best bit of their conference, mm. but yeah. about a third, two thirds didn't do it. And when you got a third, fifteen hundred people went. Yeah, it? That's over over. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Is it more than London? Yeah. Much yeah, bigger. It's always always much bigger than London. So um, so that, that, that's, 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 that's my concern. How much do you, as a product manager of that gathering yeah. product? Aim certain slices at certain groups, and how much do you know? I think it'd be fine to do that if they had something. Oh, like that. Yeah. Well, that's what. We're so going again. forward, then, is there a self-organising team for the gatherings? Yes, there is in terms of Scrum Alliance, and there is in terms of volunteers. Yeah. You rolled off, didn't you, after yeah. London? Yeah. Um, there's something similar in North America. So a few people have rolled off after this one, and a few new people I think are going to roll on for New York, which I believe is next year. Mm-hmm. So it should be quite a fun New York. I think we're trying to make an effort to go to New York. Yeah, we thought Austin was nice. It was a nice place to go. So the New York would be pretty cool. So um, yeah, so they've rolled in community on that as well. So there we go. Massively overlong session. Use some of it for your bonus video. Um, but I want to make sure I missed nothing so people have got a full appreciation of how good the gathering was. Excellent. It was what they did. Yeah, so I imagine that Paul, Paul might edit this a little bit, but we'll put the full version up on the Patreon website yeah. if anybody wants to watch because it will be video as well watch the you full see, and Nigel's version. smiling face on the, and you can uh, see him reading his script <laughs> <laughs> and you can see how we how we stay engaged yeah. while he's talking so listen right to the end of the to this podcast for the for details on how to do that but other than that my well my pint glass is empty Jeff's pint glass is empty I can Nigel know. has barely stopped talking so his is still full so um, we'll, but we'll say cheers on this point thanks for coming Nigel cheers Nigel Ha <laughs> ha.